Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do the first book haul of 2024. The, the majority of these books are actually things that I got for Christmas or picked up in December 2023. Got some lovely picks here, so without much further ado, let's just get right into these books. The first two books I picked up at the airport going to Tenerife with my family, which, side note, that holiday was just beautiful. I did nothing. It was lovely. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a holiday where you do absolutely nothing. Felt very recharged and restored. And I did pick up a couple of books, however, I didn't end up actually reading either of them, or at least not finishing them. The first of those books being In Memoriam by Alice Wynn. This is one that I did start while I was on holiday, but actually still at the time of filming, which is January the 11th, I'm still reading this. Not because I'm not enjoying it, but because I'm just pouring over this one quite slowly, which is fine. It's actually working to this book's advantage. These characters just have a little longer to linger in my heart. So this is a World War One historical fiction focusing on these two main characters, Sidney Elwood and Henry Gaunt, who are both students and best friends at this private school in the UK. Very privileged, kind of high and mighty, very naive to the world. However, Henry is half German, his mother is German, and when war breaks out there is a lot of suspicion on his family and where their allegiances lie. And so Henry is pressured to enlist before he turns 18. He does so, he immediately becomes a captain, and Sidney ends up joining him not long after. Both Elwood and Gaunt are desperately in love with each other, though they've never been able to properly say it to each other. And we see as the war really tests them, the impact that it has on their mental health, on their love, and then reflecting on their lives and their privileged positions. And how much does that actually mean when you're in a war zone? This is really, really great so far. And unless something very, very bad happens towards the end of the book, I would definitely recommend picking this one up. The next book that I picked up at the airport is honestly a bit of a departure for me and what I typically tend to read, but I've heard nothing but good things about this book and also had some pressure, some slight friendly pressure put onto me by a couple of my friends to read this one. And it is Babel by R.F. Kwong. Yes, the book that everyone and their mother has been talking about in 2022 and 2023. I did decide that if I was going to end up picking this up, I'd wait until the paperback came out. And I'm glad I did because that, that hardback, oh, she was chunky. I honestly do not know much about this aside from it being fantasy set at Oxford. It's somehow to do with translation. I think the main reason that people wanted me to pick this up was for the historical element or this like alternative history. The fact that it is set at Oxford and I live in Oxford, so I can kind of point at different places and be like, aha! But yeah, I'm curious to see what I make of this. The only other R.F. Kwong that I've read is Yellowface, which is obviously very different in tone. That was more of a thriller. This is more fantasy. So it'd be very, very interesting to see R.F. Kwong in what I believe is meant to be her like home genre, the thing that people know her for. So yeah, we'll see what I think about this one. Next up is a book that I know very, very little about. Aside from, I've heard lots of people talking about it, saying how great it is. I know it popped up on a lot of people's best of 2023 lists, but I went with my parents out for Christmas dinner, not on Christmas day but a week before, there was a little book swap library and I saw this, Trespasses by Louise Kennedy and decided, you know what, it's free, let's give it a go. This I know is set during the Troubles in Ireland, the main character is living in Belfast, I believe it's following a woman who ends up having an affair with a married man and the repercussions of that, but honestly I don't know much aside from that. It was shortlisted for the Women's Prize and honestly when I looked at the Women's Prize this past year I wasn't particularly impressed, there wasn't a lot that was calling out to me. This one did seem quite interesting but I was kind of waiting to hear more people's thoughts. So yeah, I'm kind of going in blind to this one, but I've heard good things, so let's hope it lives up. And then we get into some of the Christmas books. First one probably seems a bit rogue, but it's one that I've been wanting to pick up for a while, is The Biscuit, The History of a Very British Indulgence by Lizzie Collingham. This is a book that I knew I was getting because I pointed this out to my mother when we went to Chatsworth House. It was in their gift shop, and I was like, oh my god, I've always wanted to read this, but I can never find it in Waterstones. And so when I saw it, I was like, mother, please. <laughs> and yeah, this is just the history of The Biscuit. And no, not those disgusting biscuits that you have in the US that you have with gravy or whatever. No, I'm talking actual biscuits. You know, the stuff you dunk in your tea. I do love a good biscuit myself. In fact, I actually created a dunking biscuit book tag where I went through a bunch of different brands of biscuits in the UK and then had a bookish prompt alongside it. That was from a few years ago, but I will link it down below if it's of interest to any of you. In work, the office that I share with three or four of my colleagues is always called the biscuit office because, you know, we've always got biscuits in stock or cake. It's why I've got such a chubby little face. So yeah, I think this will just be good fun. Next up was a gift from my friend India. She picked up for me Mary or the Birth of Frankenstein by Anna Eckhout. So this is looking, as you might expect, at the life of Mary Shelley, a fictionalised version of her life. In this we are following 1816 when she's in Geneva, actually coming up with Frankenstein after Lord Byron challenges herself, her husband, John Polidori and himself to write a ghost story. But then we're also flashing back to 1812 when Mary is sent to Scotland to live with the Baxter family, of which I believe we don't actually know a whole lot of 
about what happened there but it's exploring her relationship to Isabella Baxter and currently around about halfway through this one and I'm honestly not quite sure what I think of this so far. I was expecting to love this like I did Love and Fury by Samantha Silver which is about her mother Mary Wollstonecraft but so far my feeling is that all of the chapters that are about Geneva I'm really enjoying and then the 1812 chapters I'm like was this necessary but you know full thoughts to come. A book that I don't actually have to show you because I ended up reading it before I came back to Oxford is a fun little book called The Wheel is Spinning but the Hamster is Dead. This is a short little gifty book looking at lots of funny little idioms from different countries or taking a particular expression that you might find in England and then seeing all the different ways that it can translate in other countries all the way from it's time to go now or trying to let somebody know that you're on your period and all the different ways those phrases can translate. Really good fun and now we're moving on to the books that I've picked up in 2024 so far. Honestly I was expecting to not be picking up anything this month especially because I thought that I had completely bypassed Waterstones hardback sale. So after Christmas Waterstones always do half off of most of their hardbacks and honestly I thought that that was only up until New Year's Day and because I don't tend to go shopping between Christmas and New Year really or at least not near any Waterstones I'm usually at home. I thought I was going to completely miss this sale but no when I went into Waterstones on my way to rehearsal I found this with a hard price sticker and I was buzzing. So this is A History of the Roman Empire and 21 Women by Emma Southern, which I believe has a much funnier title in the US, though it has completely slipped my mind. I'm just gonna pop it on the screen now. But when I did see that title, I was like, excuse me, why is that not the UK title? Because I have read her previous title, which was A Fatal Thing Happened on the Way to the Forum. You know, musical theatre puns, we love to see them. And I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so funny. That was a history of murder in ancient Rome, all the different ways that murder was kind of integrated into ancient Roman culture. Whereas this very much does what it says on the it is a history of the Roman Empire in 21 women. As somebody who is one, not particularly engaged with the Roman Empire, but two, loves a woman focused history, this is my way in I think. And especially paired with Emma Southern's very funny, very colloquial, quite irreverent sense of humour. I think this will do a lot for me opening up this world. Slightly different track with the next book that I picked up. I have got Style and Substance, Why What We Wear Matters, edited by Bay Garnet. And this is a beautiful little thing. You would expect it to be illustrated but it's not unfortunately. But this is a collection of different essays from different prominent people within fashion but also celebrities on fashion and style and why it matters. Probably can't tell today because I am kind of done some librarian chic right now. But you know, I like getting dressed up. I like clothes and I love people who have like a good developed sense of personal style. I admire them, I envy them, I wish I had their budget, but instead I can read more about their philosophies and what clothes and style mean to them. In this there are essays, letters, little snippets of inspiration from people like Beau Brummel, Bernadine Evaristo, Ram Stoker, Davina McCall, F. Scott Fitzgerald, never thought I'd put those two together in a sentence, Fran Leibowitz, David Bowie, Colette, Charlotte Tilbury, Stanley Tucci, Z D. Smith, Maya Angelou, Oscar Wilde. There are just so many different people who are reflecting in here. I imagine for the historical ones, obviously they're taking it from like previous diary entries, previous essays that have been written. I don't know how many were written just for this book itself, but I just feel like this is a cute little thing. And until I picked this book up, I didn't actually realise how many like historical figures were going to be quoted in here. So that actually makes this even more exciting to me. And I don't know, it just makes it feel a little bit more universal. Philosophies of style from 200 years ago and how we might echo them today. I don't know, this just seems really cool to me. And then the final book that I have to show you is Foster by Claire Keegan. This is one that I actually listened to on audiobook from my library, went back to the beginning, listened to it again and then decided okay I will have to pick up a copy of this because I love this book. I think by now my book review on this will have come out, either that or it's just about to come out so I will leave that down below for you. But this is a beautiful, a very short novella, historical fiction looking at a young girl who is sent to a foster family while her mother gives birth and through it is experiencing warmth and compassion and care that she's never really experienced before, which is so beautiful and heartwarming but tinged with a bit of sadness when we know that this is just a temporary arrangement. I just thought this was so lovely and definitely emblematic of how I want to be reading and buying in future. I would much prefer to either be reading something on ebook, audiobook or from the library, deciding then that I like the book enough to pick it up rather than just blind purchasing a lot of things and then finding out I don't like them and then having to do a massive unhaul at the end of the year. This system would work better for me I think so we'll see if I can keep it up. But there we go those are all of the books that I picked up in December and the first couple of weeks of January. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken about today, are there any that you're excited about? Alternatively let me know anything you've picked up recently especially I would love to know what your favourite book was that you got for Christmas. I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.